Good morning, Syngap Land. This is Mike Gralia. It's Friday, April 9th, 2021. This is the fifth episode of Syngap 10, a 10 minute briefing from me on everything that I think is going on in Syngap this week, everything SRF has been working on on the behalf of families with Syngapians. I try to talk fast. If it's too fast, slow me down. It's a podcast. If it's not fast enough, no one said that, but go ahead and speed me up. It's a podcast. By the way, this is a podcast. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, you could also be just having it on your phone. So wherever you listen to podcasts, Google, Spotify, Am- Apple, everywhere, just look for Syngap 10, or you can go to syngap.fund. That's how we do our short links. So easy to remember, syngap.fund slash 10, the number 10. Go ahead and go there. There's a little page, previous episodes. You can click to click through to the various providers, but th- enough about that. Let's, let's jump in. We got a lot to talk about. I want to start by thanking a number of directors who've joined me on a lot, I mean a lot of Zoom calls this week. Definitely Syngap is catching a lot of people's attention. A lot of people are interested in working on Syngap and they're calling us to learn more, to understand about citizen, to understand about data, to understand a little bit about the disease and also to be like, hey, by the way, would you like to help and help this happen by investing in it? So lots of great opportunities to spend money and speed up therapeutic development for our kids. That's ultimately why we're here, right? We're here to support well, we're here to support each other and learn about this disease and help new families, of course. We're also here to raise money and make things happen fast. Let me tell you, there's no shortage of stuff to, to invest in right now. Um, what we need to do is raise more money. So there's some very real opportunities that were presented to us this week that we need to think about and and consider investing against. So thank you so much to the families who, uh, the directors who like me have zoom eyes right now from a lot of screens with a lot of slides. Um, other thing I want to tell you about is coming soon. We're definitely going to do this one biomarker EEG. So whatever, whatever therapy or drug happens, there's going to be a study. And in that study, they're going to have to measure something. What are they going to measure to know it's working? I've talked about this before. So we found this exceptional group of people. I don't want to say too much quite yet. It's not quite inked, but we're going to hopefully give them a grant and they're going to spend get some brainiacs working on looking at EEGs and figuring out what it is you would study to to um, measure progress in a syngapian. That's super exciting. Other things super exciting is uh, many of you know JR. She's a geneticist and a volunteer with SRF. Uh, we have from Citizen, again, all this data is so precious. From Citizen, we got a list of all these mutations. And what JR is working on right now is all these different approaches we, we know about, right? So there's tRNA, there's prime editing, there's base editing, there's a, this ASO, there's that ASO. Don't worry, I don't know what these things mean either. That's why I need JR and Hans in these meetings because they explain it to me. But there's all these different technologies that people are working on that can fix certain kinds of mutations. Certain kinds of mutations. They can't fix them all. So, well, some, well, I think prime editing can, but that's like five years out. What, what, uh, rabbit hole. So there's all these different approaches. And we have all these different types of mutations. So the question is, which approach works on which mutation? So right now, JR is building a table based on all the people in Citizen. So if you're not in Citizen, get in Citizen so we can do this work for you for free. All these different mutations that are in Citizen, all these different approaches, and we're building a table to understand, okay, which which mutations would work for which approaches. Aside from being interesting, very interesting, especially if your kid's on that list. It tells us, hey, this patient and this patient and this patient, they would be amenable to two or three different approaches. Why does that matter? Well, we're about to spend some money making cell lines, right? As I've alluded to before, you need to take patient derived, you need cells made from patients. You can take blood from patients and grow little patient based cells in dishes. And then the next company that says, hey, I want to try my technology. Do you have any cell lines? We can be like, here you go. Go for it. Try it out. Everybody try it out. We've tried this with the universities. It's a headache. Nobody likes to share, so we're just going to make our own. And they're not cheap. Round numbers, $10,000 each um, per patient. So the question is, which ones do we spend $10,000 on? Go back to that beautiful table JR is working on. If this person has, has a mutation that's amenable to like one thing and it's five years out, sorry about your luck. We're not going to build a cell line on you. If this person's got a mutation that's amenable to base editing, prime editing, other stuff I don't understand... We're going to build an IPSC line on that patient because there's three different kinds of companies who would want that cell line, right? So 
we're, we're being really smart. We know there's people out there working hard to raise money with Sprint for Syngap, and this money is precious. These funds we raise are precious, and we treat them as such. So we're, we're trying to figure out the smartest way to spend them in terms of building a cell line that a lot of different companies and labs can use. And we're trying to figure out exactly which patients to call and be like, hey, you just won the lottery. We're going to spend 10 grand building a cell line on your kid and their sibling. By the way, it'd be nice to have a sibling. So um, stay tuned on that. But thank you so much, JR, for your leadership here and your incredible brain on working on these cell lines, it's it's exceptional work. All right, I'm run. I'm all, I, that, that was just my intro. I got five minutes left. There's going to be a webinar on Thursday. SSB syngap.fund slash SSB seizures, sleep, and behaviors. This is what that study that we're going to build on uh, Citizen is going to be about. So I alluded last week that a drug company is looking to do a study of our patients to understand if they should launch a clinical trial with their product in our patients. They want to do a 30-day survey where basically patients who sign up will do a, a survey on sleep, a survey on behaviors, those are quick, and then a daily report of seizures, just like kind of seizure and how many seizures, nothing special. You do that for 30 days, you get a gift card, you get a thank you note, the data stays in Citizen because it's Citizen, it's your data and they get a copy, and they can figure out how to design a clinical trial. It's crazy exciting. It proves the validity of Citizen. It's an opportunity for us to get one step closer to one more therapy for our kids, right? You know those horrible meetings in neurologist's office where you're hearing about all the different drugs and all the different side effects, and you're like, why are there no better options? This is a better, this is maybe a better option. So if you're in Citizen, go ahead, and when you get that email on Monday being like, hey, you're invited to a trial, say, yes, I want to do it. And then sign up for this webinar. In fact, you can sign up right now. Syngap.fund slash SSB. We'll answer all your questions. Me and Virginia will take them all. SSB. Um, citizen. 103 people have signed up for Citizen in the U.S. That means 110 haven't. What, what are you guys thinking? I don't understand. 95 of those people had pathogenic mutations. A couple of them, uh, it's a bus. If, if your genetic report says variant of uncertain significance, that's a bus. Separate. It's a whole separate work stream. But for the 95 of you who have pathogenic or likely pathogenic mutations, congratulations. If your kid is 3 to 18, you're going to get an email and you're going to be invited to this, this SSB study. If you're a Syngap parent in the U.S. and you have not signed up for Citizen, call me. Let's talk about it. You should sign up for Citizen. It's important. It's going to create a lot of opportunities for us to study uh, your kid, to help researchers study your kid for free, and to help companies build clinical trials. Citizen.com slash Syngap1. Um, citizen spoke with two eyes. All right, let's keep going. There's a few more things I want to talk about. I only have two and a half minutes left. Uh, the Child Neurology Foundation, who we have a great relationship with, is doing a caregiver survey. If you could, please take that survey. If 10 or more Syngap families take it, we get a little Syngap report from them. Syngap.fun slash CNF, Child Neurology Foundation. The deadline is April 23rd. CNF is a great organization. We really enjoy working with them. And this is, a, this is a really important study. So syngap.fund slash CNF, go ahead, click on through that. Um, also want to mention that, you know, I like to say kids don't get diagnosed, families get diagnosed, right? And when I say that, I think about the parents and the siblings because everyone's life gets changed. But I'm starting to appreciate talking to more and more families that actually grandparents get diagnosed too. And, and it's a different kind of relationship because they got suddenly their grandkid is sick with something they, they, they haven't heard about before and, and, their, and their kid the Syngapian's parent, their life just got turned upside down too. So it's a whole different experience for grandparents. And I was talking to a wonderful grandparent named Barbara who, said, who really wanted to learn more about this. And I said, let's, go, let's just have you talk to more grandparents. Maybe you can write an article. So Barbara's interviewing people. Barbara's lovely. We're debriefing today. If you want to talk to Barbara, if you want your parent to talk to Barbara, if you're a grandparent, you want to talk to Barbara. Same thing. Syngap.fun slash grand. Bar There's a little bit about Barbara in there. There's an email. Call Barbara. Email Barbara. Go talk to her. Help her understand the grandparent experience for Syngapians. I think it's super cool. I got to move faster. Sprint for Syngap is happening. We've raised over $62,000. That's amazing. Keep going. We need more money. I, I'm not kidding. There's so many opportunities. Like these IPSC lines, they're going to go in a flash. Um, and then there's also the Medellis thing I talked about last week. We've raised $62,000. Keep going. This is important work. Thank you so much to the 13 families who've already raised over $1,000. I don't have time to shout you out, but syngap.fun slash sprint. Check out who those families are and sign up and donate. Thank you very much. Reminder, this week, Enzo8 from Brazil was one of our warriors. Um, syngap.fun slash warriors. Make sure you check him out. It's a great write-up. We also have two webinars coming up. The GI one on um, April 22nd and the advocacy one on May 6th. Those are both super important. Um, I want to just talk about one more thing if I have time. I have 10 more seconds, maybe 15. Um, we are starting to think about 
lists of doctors. So look forward to that. We need to gather a list of all the doctors in the U.S. who've seen Syngaffians. If you're particularly thrilled with yours, please reach out to me and let me know so I can make sure they're on the list. And with that, again, thank you. This is Syngap 10. It is a podcast. Make sure you sign up. I appreciate your attention and look forward to talking to you more.